Hello and welcome back to 225 Flat and Live Tab G Tutorials. Today I'm going to be showing you guys some guns and blessings combinations and some of my favorite weapons to use in general. So first off we're going to start with the rifle category in which one of my favorites is the AKS. I use this in my tutorial video overall and the uh, muzzle attachments that I typically use for it which I'll use for sake of demonstration are a red dot, a laser, and a compensator. So I'll put these on the AKS and this rifle is very very good when compared to other weapons like the PPSH or the MP40 which I shall demonstrate. The AKS's spray is very very consistent. You can see that it hits most of these shots in a straight line as opposed to the PPSH when even if it has the same attachments it's not as good. The spray is a little less consistent. The damage is very similar but the spray is less consistent and even though it does have more ammo the PPSH just has a worse recoil and spray overall. I shall also compare this to the Thompson, which is more comparable to the AK-47. It has a bit more recoil, still very controllable, and I'll take most of these, but the AKS is typically my favorite because it is well affected by weapon masteries and spray blessings, and that's why I typically uh, will pick it up as my ideal rifle of choice. Now this said, there are other SMGs that of course are uh, good choices. For instance, the MA1 Thompson, the MP40 is good in terms of its damage and low recoil, but it is very, very slow to fire. Um, the recoil and the controllability is all right, but it's definitely not. A, it's a temporary gun, early game if required. Typically, the Tommy gun, the AKS, are the good starting weapons. Now, of course, if you use any of these, are all right, but not to be kept. These two guns are the ones to be kept. Now next, moving on to the sniper rifle and rifle category. My typical uh, favorite rifle is the musket. Uh, this gun without any other barrel attachments and only with a scope, for instance, is actually not very good. Uh, if you need a fast barrel to have it be used effectively, uh, for instance, if you can still hit some shots pretty well and it does a high amount of damage, but at far range, you're actually not really going to hit much, and that's the point when the, when the fast barrel is, is necessary. I'll demonstrate this by aiming at these targets all over here. So first I'll shoot at this guy without the fast barrel. You can see that I don't hit him even with my uh, crosshair right on his head. I don't hit him. Now if I put the fast barrel on it and I aim in the exact same location. Nice. And that's why the musket with the fast barrel is one of my favorite sniper rifles. Uh, you do have to reload it every time because it is a one shot and it is relatively loud but it's very good. Now next the car 98k. This gun also uh, uh, relies on a barrel attachment in order to be properly effective. It is still quite accurate. As you can see, if I put my crosshair on this guy, I'll still hit him, and he'll fall down because it does have knockback. But in order for it to be a proper one-shot, if you just put a double barrel on it. The double barrel is one of the attachments in which it shoots two bullets out of the barrel, but it actually reduces damage. However, the car 98K has just enough damage to benefit from this, and it becomes a one-shot. So, And also, this gun does not require uh, a reload every time because it has five bullets. So you can shoot multiple shots. Shots, although the rate of fire is quite slow, it'll, it's still very effective. Uh, line up your shots and you can just hit them and it'll do pretty well. So you get you know, those three shots thanks to the double barrel because the double barrel, as you notice, uses two shots. And that's what makes the car 98k with a double barrel very good. Now next, two other comparable sniper rifles are the Op and the Barrett. They're very, very similar. So both the Op and the Barrett do not require a double barrel to be effective. If you put one on, it's going to be the exact same amount of damage. Uh, that's why it is quite effective with a heavy barrel, but the heavy barrel does it increases damage and recoil. Uh, the damage increase is the most important part, but it's also very not maneuverable if you're in tight spaces. It's not because it affects your gun's physical size. You'll see it's getting pushed around, and I can't use it very well. But either way, the op is, is particularly accurate. It also sounds very good. I'm just going to shoot at this guy over here. I hit him in the chest. That guy was already low, so uh, I, I'm killing them pretty quickly. But anyway, uh, they're, they do quite a lot of damage. Uh, they knock back quite a lot. And they're very fun guns to use. You can see with a heavy barrel, the op is a one shot, uh, but without it, it's not. That's what's most important about it, is that without the heavy barrel, it'll just knock back. It won't quite kill them. This guy just respawned, and you'll see I hit him in the chest. He's not going to die. With the heavy barrel, it does do well, but also makes it less maneuverable, so keep that in mind. There are a couple other sniper rifles that you'll see in the game, but they're a little bit more rare. For instance, the Op S74U, which is technically a sniper SMG, but that's um, a very rare gun, which is pretty much a guaranteed win. Also the really big Barrett, which is in the shooting range, which you can find, which knocks you back as more transportation than anything else. Here, for instance, this is the Op S7 for you. You can find it in the tr in the shooting range. It is pretty much the best gun in the game. It's not the it's it's very rare. It's 60 times rarer than a regular Op, which is why it's not to be relied upon. But it has the exact same damage as an Op, the same knockback as an Op, but it has the same firing rate and mag capacity as an AKS 7 for you. 
So you see that uh, just if I look at this guy, uh, very little recoil and he gets knocked back. This gun uh, shouldn't even really be part of this video at all because even though it is very fun and, and very overpowered, it is extremely rare. So this is just something in general to look out for, not something to rely upon. Just like if you see it, pick it up and use it because it's very good. But that's typically it for snipers. Uh, there is technically the VSS, but that it is a sniper, but it is also more of an SMG. You'll see if I shoot at this guy over here, I'll take the scope off of those type of the 4X. This 4X comes stock with the weapon. Uh, you'll see that it has quite a high bullet drop. You'll see that all those bullets over there, they drop quite a lot. So when you're actually aiming with the VSS, it is crucial that you aim with the bullet drop in mind if you're shooting over long distances. A fast barrel does help significantly. As you can see, if I shoot now, there's less bullet drop. The bullets will go farther, but there's still bullet drop there. So fast barrel helps a lot. As you can see, this fast barrel is a necessary muzzle attachment, which I will talk about in my muzzle video and all of the weapon attachments that will be in there. But the VSS is technically more of an SMG than it is a sniper rifle. Either way, still, it is a very good gun. Definitely to be compared with the AKS, even though it does a little bit less damage. Uh, the recoil is also very manageable. The scope is a nice to have, so that's something to be noted, even though it's not particularly a sniper rifle and more of a sniper SMG. Now, in the actual full-on, full-size rifle category, these are technically these are all rifles, while the AKS is technically an SMG, and all of these are SMGs as well. The full-size rifles are very good, and where picked up are, of course, pretty pretty useful in the game. Even though I'll still take an AKS over either of these. The AK-47 and the SCAR-H is those weapons in question. Uh, they are pretty high damage in terms of both of their caliber. They both require normal ammo, obviously, while the others require small ammo. And they are a little bit less manageable in recoil than the SMGs, but the SCAR-H actually has far more manageable recoil, and the spread is very tight, which is very nice. The AK-47's damage is a little bit higher, shoots a little bit faster, and the mag is bigger, though. Either way, these two rifles are very battle effective. The FAMAS is also to be noted is pretty good. Uh, they're very, very useful guns just to have in general. And other weapons that I actually didn't mention in my full-on tutorial videos are these three special weapons. The only one that I will use out of uh, these actual five here, instead of the three typical uh, big caliber weapons, are this the MG42, which uh, typically benefits from a compensator, simply because of its recoil, which I will demonstrate. With it completely stock, it is quite uncontrollable. The recoil is extremely high, but the spread isn't actually that bad. For instance, if I actually really try, then I can, if I'm up close, then I can really, I can really mow people down, but of course that's how most weapons work. But if you put on a compensator, then it becomes much more manageable, and additionally, if you have a weapon mastery blessing, then it makes this gun very, very deadly, because now the recoil is very, very low, very comparable to that of an AKS. If the fire rate is high, damage is high, spread is very tight, makes this gun very effective, assuming you have a compensator and a legendary weapon mastery, and of course, all of these weapons, rifles, and SMGs benefit from sprays as well, and when you have the right muzzle attachments, they become very, very deadly. Also to be noted, part of the special weapons category, the S7. This one is a little is a little more rare, and I don't use it that much. It's a burst rifle, as you can see, but it is also fully automatic. You'll notice that stock, it has a, uh, a iron sight like this. It's very, very weird. So I usually put a red dot on it, and that makes it a little more usable. It is burst, but it's also full auto, because you can pretty much just tap it a lot. You'll see there is effectively zero recoil. It is a four-round burst. Um, it's very, very weird, uh, very low recoil, but it's also quite battle effective. This I will typically not take over an AKS because it is less effective in close range. It is more of like a far range destroyer, uh, not of course as much as a sniper rifle would be, but in terms of mid range rifle effectiveness, the S7 is pretty much where it's at, although other rifles can do better. If you find one, give it a try. All of these guns you have to try and see what you're familiar with. Some of them are more comparable to performance in other games like Valorant, Fortnite, CSGO, all of those. You'll see the, you'll see the uh, correlations in each game. But that's pretty much it for rifles. These are the main ones that I use. Now next, moving on to the pistol category, all of these one-handed weapons, as I said in my original Tab G tutorial, you can have one in your third slot, but of course, if you put one in your main slot, then you can hold two of them. And all of these guns, the one-handed guns, apply for that. Even if you have two tasers, you can still dual-wield your tasers. So this is never a practical application for them, but it, it does work. So my typical usage of these one-handed guns is uh, dual Glocks. If you have two Glocks, it is very, very devastating. I'll take off this Weapon Mastery to, to show it, even though it is much better with that. It is very high damage, high 
controllability and high fire rate so with this slot if when you're very close up at least you can really quickly melt people all of those are headshots but see even with body shots it still does a very good job i'm still reloading early out of habit you can see that it's it's melts people very very quickly it's very good for mowing down close range assuming you don't have a shotgun or you have a spray blessing and a weapon mastery then the glock is what you should go for in terms of holding two one-handed weapons that's pretty much where it's at i don't hold any other weapon with two hands Otherwise, I'd just be going for the Glocks. Now, there are, of course, other one-handed weapons, but most of these are only good early game. Uh, with that exception in mind, the Taser is very good to keep end game, and sometimes the Flintlock is fun to use if you just want to meme on people. But the Taser is very, very nice because this you can use to stun people. So my Taser I'll typically keep in my third slot, unless I have a spell, which I'll talk about later. But tasers are very cool because it'll stun them. They can still shoot, but they can't actually do anything else. You'll see they pretty much, the character's forced to do that for quite a bit. So it's nice if you get the advantage of someone. And for instance, if you're turning a corner, you know where they are. You tase them quickly if you can hit your shots, like not me. And then you just sort of go for the kill, which is very, very useful. Uh, quite funny to do. Also, it works pretty well with melee weapons. If you're having trouble meleeing somebody, then you can taser them and then go for a melee kill. Either way, those are the uh, most used uh, one-handed weapons in terms of what I use them for. Of course, all of these are somewhat battle effective in early game, but I wouldn't go for them late game. Those are late game weapons, but all of these, of course, they work just how you would expect. The 1911 is a very consistent, trusty gun. The revolver is probably the best long range weapon out of the a uh, one-handed. Uh, it's the aim is, is very very consistent. Of course, only six shots, but if you use it well, then it's very very good. The 1911 isn't that quite as good long range, but when you're close up, then it, it's it's pretty good. But that's only for early game. I typically wouldn't keep them for late game when you're actually, when the ring's closing and you're not as close up to people. Or even when you are close up to people, they'll be spraying you down with something much, much better. So next, moving on to shotguns. All of these here are shotguns with the exception of these one-handed weapons. Uh, I typically go for my two main shotguns of choice, are the AA-12 and the Blunderbuss. I used to use the Mossberg more, but it's not as good as the Blunderbuss. The Blunderbuss is actually a musket weapon. As you can see, it requires musket ammo versus the AA-12, which is shotgun ammo. But the AA-12 is one of two automatic shotguns. You can see that it is fully auto. I'm holding down left click right now. Fully auto. It has quite a lot of recoil, but it is manageable. Uh, the spread is pretty tight for a shotgun, so long range, it's not that bad in terms of long range shotgun combat. In terms of like actual medium range, then you need to have a rifle, because a shot all shotguns should be a specialty weapon accompanied with a rifle. You should never have two close range weapons. You should always have a, a rifle here and a specialty weapon like a shotgun here, and that way you can be most effective at pretty much all ranges. The blunderbuss is my go-to now. It's definitely the most reliable gun in the game because it is a one-shot when you're close enough. Uh, it's definitely my favorite gun, aside from the Op-S. If you get the aim perfectly right and you know exactly where to shoot, then each shot is a one hit. And also, it should be noted that if you get into the flow with it, you, if you reload right after you shoot, then it's quite a quick shot compared to the Mossberg, which is also a little bit quick, but this is definitely a little bit better because the Mossberg is not a one-shot when you're right up next to everybody. So this is what makes the blunderbuss very, very good. With that in mind, of course, it is musket ammo, so sometimes you'll find a little bit less of it. But the fact that it is a one-shot is very, very useful when you have the recycling blessing. Recycling, I used to think, was a horrible blessing, but now I realize that it's actually one of the best if you are using a blunderbuss. Because each time you reload, you get 15 HP. So if you're in a firefight, if you also have vampire, then each shot, you shoot somebody, you get HP from their life and then you reload, you get 15 HP, you keep going. That's what makes it a very devastating gun when you have the right blessings. Even when you don't, it's still a very, very good gun. It's still very effective in firefights and just an overall high damage, high damage dealer when you're close range, and that's why this is definitely my favorite shotgun. The AA-12 specifically benefits from weapon mastery and spray is when it becomes really in its element. You'll see that if I reload it, then I have more weapon capacity, and then it can really do high damage, and the spread is tighter. It should be noted that weapon mastery affects the range of an effective shotgun. For instance, if, if I stand here, what I'll do is I'll just kill these guys off so that full HP. What I do is I'll stand here and try to shoot them without a weapon mastery. If I try to shoot them, you'll see that I'll do a bit of damage, but it won't actually be that much. So now I'll pick this back up and I'll kill these guys back to zero. Stand in the same spot. And now the spread is much, much tighter. 
So weapon mastery does affect shotguns in a positive way, and spray it makes the reload speed uh, faster and the reload, the actual mag capacity. If you have a blunderbuss, then you need you need two spray blessings in order to make it actually from one to two because it, it bumps the the mag size. Either way. Uh, shotguns do benefit from a lot of blessings in close range they're devastating just you need to have a rifle or an smg some mid-range or long-range weapon to associate with it otherwise if you're just way too far away from someone and you only have close range weapons then you're done for now for the last weapon category we have um, crossbows and specialty weapons uh, all of these are quite fun to use except for the taser crossbow i don't like that one <laughs> but the gospel is definitely very very effective um very fun to use this is a, uh, a crossbow that the um, arrow actually explodes after you shoot it. And it is very, very useful for um, long-range combat if you have a fast barrel on it because it makes it more of a sniper rifle than anything else because the arrow travels much faster with very little drop. So crosshair right on him, and then it's very, very close. Uh, if you are shooting like with... Oh my gosh, that's really weird. If you're shooting with full precision, then you'll still hit people with a fast barrel on it. The automatic crossbow is also very, very fun to use. Um, it's only very good early game in which it actually becomes very battle effective. When you're close up to somebody, then you can spray. Uh, this auto, the auto crossy does less damage per bolt than the actual regular crossbow. Still, it is a one hit to the head, so that's something to keep in mind. Except for that guy for some reason, anyway. Uh, the Gauss Bow is typically the better late game play because this you can shoot people and it'll still kill them if you shoot them in the head. If you actually hit your shots in the head, mind you, you'll still kill them if you shoot them in the head, but it will uh, explode after that. So even if you don't kill them, like for instance with a body shot, then that guy's dead anyway. And then he flies into the air, which is pretty cool. Oh. There are a ton of crossbows in this game. There's, the, as I said, the auto crossy, there's the crossbow pistol, which is not very good. Uh, and then two of the other specialties are the firework crossbow and the balloon crossbow. These ones are uh, actually very common, you won't see them very often, but they are very funny to use because the balloon crossbow, when you shoot it on somebody, they'll start rising up uh, and this makes them a pr uh, better target to shoot with. I always hate it when people use this against me, but honestly, it's actually not that battle effective and shouldn't be carried with you because it is a waste of a slot. You'll probably find a better weapon by the time one of these comes along. Next is the fire but war crossbow. This one's um, a little infuriating. Uh, when it shoots fireworks some people, it kind of pushes them around. Uh, they don't explode or anything. It just sort of pushes you around. You see the guys are kind of flying off. It's uh, funny, but it's not very effective to use in battle. Uh, there are a lot of weapons in this game that are entirely memes and are just there for a joke. Like, for instance, the Op S74U. Obviously, this isn't a real weapon, and it's very fun, and it's a very good weapon, but it's a joke. Uh, there's also the Inflatable Hammer, which is obviously a joke. The Really Big Barret, which is obviously a joke as well. There are so many of these joke weapons that you'll find that are very fun to use, but you can tell weren't actually designed to, with uh, uh, true to reality in mind. They are just used, uh, designed because they're very funny, just joke weapons. That's the entire vibe of this game. It's called Totally Accurate Battlegrounds, so you can expect that. That's what this game really is. There's a lot of jokes, but there's also some really effective things that you can use to make yourself better in battle. So just look out for that kind of stuff. And of course, I'm here to help you guys uh, use that in all of your games. So this has been 225. Thank you for watching.